Red Seal Sample Examination Questions for General Machinist Trade Explained. What is a Red Seal? A Red Seal is a certificate that you'll get after you complete your CFQ, which is your Certificate of Qualifications. On the website redseal.ca, there are 20 sample questions. This video explains how they came up with the answers. A little bit more on the actual CFQ. There are 135 questions, 12 questions are common occupational skills, uh, 12 more questions on bench work, 11 questions about the drill press, 31 questions about the lathe, conventional lathe, uh, 32 questions about conventional mill, 8 questions about power saws, 11 questions about grinding, 18 questions about CNC. And to complete an apprenticeship in Ontario, it takes about three years and 8,000 hours. A little bit about how the video is laid out. I'm going to play the first slide, which is the question. Leave that on for about 30 seconds. Put up a pause symbol to give you a chance to pause the video in case you're not ready. Then I'm going to proceed with the answer. Let's get started right now. Offset measure just like that, and then we'll go minus 1.0. So it's going to change to 7737. Yes, or 07. So I'll give up a warning, uh, just you can say yes, why. And there's the there we go, and we've touched that block on. This number is not correct. So let's take a look here. Okay, we take a look down here in the machinery's handbook. That's the proper angle for three quarters per foot taper. That's the included angle. And that's the angle from the second. So this is our new question here. Okay, so here we are. Hopefully we had enough time to do it. So what we want to find is the angle for this number. There's enough information here saying that it's three quarters for us to do it two different ways. So let's do it the standard sine way. So let's pull up our calculator. Okay, so we're going to type in sine 3 minutes 34 degrees 47 seconds. So we're going to go 3 degrees DMS 34 DMS 47 then we're going to say this is a five inch sign bar so then we're going to say equals times five equals and we have our answer here okay that's one way there's a second way of doing this because they gave us enough information we know that it's three quarters taper per foot and we want to build a sign up over five inches. So we can say three quarters over 12 equals X over five. So if we go 0.75 times, we'll cross multiply here, times five, then we say equals, then divided by 12 equals which will turn out to be 0.3125.
which is pretty darn close to this guy here. That's just another way of figuring it out. Okay, I can show you all sorts of charts that'll tell you exactly how much a part's going to bend and warp and elongate. But the real reality is, most of the time we just leave a small amount on, depending on the type of material, just to accommodate the bending, the warping, and the twisting. Depending on where you work, they may also call this transfer blue. It's not as easy to clean up as it says. You might be going home looking like a smurf. We're going to try something a little different now. It's not A and it's not B. It's not metric or unified. Because there's clearance in the threads, fluid will leak out. You guessed it. It's not a British Whitworth thread. This has the same issues with the metric and imperial threads. There's clearance in between and fluid leaks out. This is also the worst thread to identify because it's a 55 degree. If you guess national pipe taper, you're correct. The reason is because as the taper goes in, it binds and removes any of the clearance that's inside the thread. It's usually accompanied by a Teflon tape or a Teflon sealant to make the seal even tighter. What we have is we have a drill inside of a drill press. We want to remove the drill, so we need a drill drift. To do this is usually a two-person job, so I've recruited Cameron. Cameron to give me a hand. Okay, Cameron, I want you to catch the drill as I release it. So go around the back side, hold on to the drill. I'll put this in, give this a tap, and the drill is released. That's it.
A drift removes a tool so well, some people think it can even remove end mills. Unfortunately, it cannot. But what we have here is we have a two inch piece of steel. They want to turn it down to this. They're taking that much per pass and it's nine inches long. Let's stop before we get all excited. I want to draw the part out a small amount here, okay? So that's our part. What they're trying to explain here is saying that it's going from two inches to that and it's taking that much per pass. So what's coming off the front is also coming off the back side. So therefore, they're doing this in one pass. Some people may read this because this is twice as much as that, that it might be done in two passes. So hopefully we didn't read it that way. Let's take a look. Here we have 12 times CS pi E equals 12 times 70 over 3.14, which is pi, times 2 equals 840 over 6.283185307. When you divide those two together, you're going to come up with an RPM of 133 six, nine, and then a bunch more. So our part is nine inches long. So we're going to divide nine, one, three, three point six, nine times 0. 0.006, which is our feed, which equals 11.219986. Then you use the DMS button, DMS, and you'll come up with 11.13. So 11 minutes, 13 seconds. Let's take a look at the first two, 5 degrees above, 5 degrees below. With modern tooling, this really isn't applicable. So right off the bat, we can disregard question A and B. Perpendicular to taper, we can have the compound rest set at almost any angle, so this question is almost irrelevant as well. On the center height is the correct answer. If you're above or below the center line, your angle will not come out correct. Okay, there's a couple different ways of doing this. 
the initial setup or your rough setup, you can either use a ruler to gauge between the offset difference that you want to put in, or you can lay out your actual part and use your tailstock with a center inside to gauge the offset. Then you use a dial indicator to indicate back and forth. It is very important that you draw either an X or a mark on your two opposing axes because it's easy when you're flipping it around back and forth to make a mistake in location. Okay, so what I have here is I have this set a half inch off center. So I'm at zero. You can see that I'm at zero. So what I want this to do is count five full revolutions and then zero out on this side. We're at zero. One, two, three, four, five. And our high point is there. So I'm zero, zero this way, and I'm a half thou, or sorry, a half inch out this way. The arbor support needs to be as close as possible to the cutter and the cutter should also be as close as possible to the spindle. The reason why this one's out is because we're setting up an indexing head and it needs the room for clearance. If the diameter of your edge finder where you're making contact with your workpiece is 200 thou, therefore you need to find the center line of that diameter. So it would be 200 thou divided by 2, which equals 100 thou. Therefore, when you touch off against your workpiece, you need to go and zero your DRO and then move your workpiece over another 100 thou to find the center or the edge of your workpiece. Sharp keyways designed with a lack of radii are at greater risk of cracking after heat treatment. Cracking usually occurs during quenching.
according to the question. I'm using a vernier to check it. Read upon accuracy of a vernier caliper is about 5 thou. Uh, our tolerance here is 1 thou, so this won't quite do it. Also in the picture is a digital caliper. Uh, B, by using gauge blocks and measuring with a dial indicator. I don't know how you're going to get square blocks into a round hole. And your indicator won't really help you in that case. And then we'll say C, using spring dividers. This will get you there, but it won't get you there within one thou. So what we have here is a one inch hole. I open this up so it's almost all the way. So it can go in. I'm at an angle. I tighten the piece down and then push and feel the amount of drag that's on there. Pull it out. And according to the question, I'm using a micrometer to check it. On most standard bandsaws, the tables can adjust up to 45 degrees. Hmm, periphery. It is possible for you to turn around and say, well, Ray, we're not really grinding periphery. We're grinding the primary and secondary angles. But if you think about it, that is the periphery. A standard drill is 118 degrees, so therefore if we divide it by 2, it's going to be 59 degrees. So in our program Trig Solver on our phone, we're going to type in 59 degrees with a base of 0.25, it's a half inch divided by 2, and it comes out with a height of 0.15, and therefore that's our answer.
Well, congratulations. See, that wasn't so bad. If you enjoyed this, please check out some of my other awesome videos on YouTube channel Shop and Math. Also, if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. It's free and it helps me out. All you have to do is click on the icon on my face and I'll take care of the rest. Don't forget, all of these questions can be found on redseal.ca.